Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I was going to review SH Figure Arts Krillin from Bandai's Dragon Ball Z line, but then I discovered that due to some legalities and old but set in stone romanization that Bandai of Japan was unwilling to budge on for the Bluefin Tamashi guys, he's actually named Klylin. So if you see this wall of consonants on a shelf, don't worry, it's the real deal. The bald man of mortality's got an appropriately short sculpt, but goddamn if he isn't beefed out for his stature. Kalilin's loose gi is sculpted with all the appropriate folds and wrinkles, and has the bonus of making his build extremely thick and solid. And given his simple color scheme, I'm happy to say that the paint apps are hell of strong! All the colors are bold, all the edges are clean, and Kuririn's Toriyama face has some of the best real-world anime eye applications I have ever seen on a toy. Now let me tell you something about bald warrior monks what got six dots in their heads and big ol' anime eyes. They got ball-jointed necks. Uh, specifically, there's a ball going into a socket in the top of his head. That thing's on a stick that is hinged so that he can do this. Some proper nodding and going high sensei, going oui, mon capitan. And then there's a ball that goes into a socket at the top of his neck. And then the neck is on a bigger ball and the base of his chest going inside a socket at the bottom of the neck. So there's a whole range of posability in here. And if you have any SH figures, you probably already knew everything I was talking about and were going like, get on with it. So I will. His abs can do this. It's a little bit squeaky, but I think that's because of the semi-PVC material used for the belt. Uh, nothing that seems like it's actually getting damaged here. There are two pieces, basically. Uh, there are balls on both spots, and you just get a very organic range of motion. His shoulders, now, his sleeves are interesting. His shoulders have got uh, all the regular fig arts stuff. You've got your double-jointed elbows and his arms, and you've got dim classic fig arts wrists. What can do all of that and have the little get, get off little hinge in the thing here. Um, his short sleeves here look a little weird. Because the way they attach is via a little ball socket thing that goes into the back of his bicep. This does mean he can also have Krillin rip off his sleeves, and that's pretty badass. But uh, the downside of this design is that it's very easy to have these weird cuts in his uniform. And by that I mean, like, weird cuts where you can see flesh underneath. And uh, usually you can adjust these to fix them, but some, some things, like raising his arm out here, there's just no real way to to cover up that hole, and that's, like, the singular main weakness of his posability is that. So, uh, I'm not sure of an easier way to have done that other than sculpting the sleeves onto the torso and limiting some of the shoulder posability, and I don't think anyone really wants that. So, they did okay, but it's a definite weakness. His hips are dem fig arts hips with the thing where they can do that and move around everywhere. And there's a, a little bit of a thigh swivel at the top, but the chunkiness of his uh, gi sculpt does get in the way of that a little bit. And he's got big, chunky, double-jointed knees and uh, some figure arts ankles. Uh, there's a small limitation in that they can't roll forward too much because of all the, the mush around the top of his boots. Uh, hasn't really gotten in the way of anything I want to do, though. And, of course, if you want a toe, you can hell of... toe. Not too much, actually, as you can see, the bend isn't too huge. Uh, again, there's just a whole lot of sculpt and mush in the way. And I don't think people in uh, the Dragon Ball Z world really ever bent their toes much. Like, all the artwork I see, they're always just, like, they're flying, or they're, you know, squatting like this and going like, ah! And they aren't really walking around, you know, using their insteps or anything, so... I'm not too bummed out about that. Anyway... Kuri Rin has got a pretty decent range of possibility. He's got, you know, the fig art stuff. And for some reason, it feels, like, cooler on him because he's so much shorter. He's so adorable. <laughs> he's scowling at me, so I'm gonna stop talking about that. Let's go into hands and heads. Many of Kura Lion's extra parts are hands, six extra pairs of them. They're all quite martial artsy and probably related to imagery from the manga and anime that I am totally an expert about, so let's just run through them. There are fist hands for punching, ninpo hands for laser beams, straight hands for chopping, open hands for moments of calm, three count hands for ramming up your opponent's nostrils while shoving your thumb into their palate, 
Tiger Claw hands for manly cat fighting, and splayed hands for saying STOP! Now let's move up to Cullen's biggest feature, his burly bald head. It's kind of scowling right now, but there are three alternately expressioned craniums to swap in, each on their own weird orange mounting block, which, apparently, helps hold them in place during shipping. You think he's scowling now? You can have him gritting his teeth too, all like <laughs> And for maximum testosterone, let's switch up to an eyes shut screaming face, all like ha! But now Clylin spies a woman, and thus puts on his cheerful face to woo her with his orange clothes and bespeckled forehead. Finally, coming with a peg-hold copy of one of his splayed hands, is Kurilin's effects part, the Destructo Disc. This thing is impressively huge, but unimpressively built from what feels like two pieces of plastic card sandwiched around a clear rod. It's all for show, though I'm sure its light construction helped to keep the figure within budget. And hey, basically being a weird double frisbee means you can get some good distance on it if you throw it at your foe. Kuririn san is my first experience with the Dragon Ball end of SH Figure Arts, and damn if it isn't a positive one. I recall hearing that the line had an up or down, or two or three, when it started, and it's one of those Figure Arts branches that's heavily supported by the out of Japan buyer market. But this bald bruiser feels super solid, and about as accessorized as I could ask for. All I can think of as far as missing parts would be like, I don't know, battle damage heads? blood on them and stuff. His short stature almost enhances the feeling of heft and good construction, and the only major negative I can drop on him would be the tray iffy way his short sleeves were executed. K. Lillen is definitely a recommendation to Dragon Ballers and Figure Arts fans alike. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I hope this video has helped you decide on whether or not you want to blow a Dragon Balled wish on acquiring a small, muscular, bald man. It's a bridge we've all got to cross in life. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Treat your little bald man right.